सीधे आपको लिए चलते हैं मंगोलिया के संसद में जहां प्रधानमंत्री संबोधित कर रहे हैं आई एम डिलाइटेड टू विजिट मंगोलिया ए कंट्री ऑफ ग्रेट पीपल योर कंट्री रिमाइंड्स अस हाउ ब्यूटीफुल दिस वर्ल्ड इज इट इज ट्रूली अ ग्रेट ऑनर टू स्पीक टू द ग्रेट हराल it is a special privilege to do so in the 25th year of democracy in mongolia you are the new bright light of democracy in our world i am deeply grateful for your generosity in hosting me on a sunday i am humbled by the warmth of the welcome and your wonderful hospitality everything that i see and experience here speaks clearly of unlimited goodwill for india i bring the greetings of your 125 1.25 billion spiritual neighbors there is no higher form there is no higher form of a relationship no bonds more sacred than this <coughs> we in india are honored that you think of us as this way as in the life of a human being in the life of a nation two few things are as precious as the gift of friendship so i speak for my entire nation to say that we deeply cherish the friendship of the mongol people india and mongolia are at the important milestone we are celebrating 60 years of diplomatic relations but our ties are timeless in spirit around 2000 years ago monks from india crossed difficult terrain and long distance to spread the message of lord buddha in this enchanting land many went from here to the hot tropics of india in search of spiritual knowledge centuries ago whenever horizons and our mobility were limited the great mongols united asia and europe their stories of courage daring and adventure continues to captivate human imagination around the world their impact on human history has been profound in the widening course of history our own cultures literature and art became interconnected and it continues to shine in the richness of india's diversity and culture today Indians and Mongolians are telling the world that the bonds of hearts and minds have the strength to overcome the barriers of distances. That bond thrives through the monks from Mongolia who came to India each year for spiritual learning, and hundreds of others who go there for education and training. it lies through the work of kushak bakula rinpoche india's ambassador here from 1990 to 2000 the pethwa monastery that he established here will be an enduring symbol of our links in the popularity of the yoga in mongolia we see the unity of our spirit five decades ago 
we stood firmly with you as you sought membership of United Nations as a proud and sovereign nation. In turn, time and again, you have stood in solidarity with us in the United Nations and elsewhere. While the human bonds have been strong, our economic ties have been modest. But I have no doubt that our relations will progress along every avenue of the new age. It will draw strength from India's economic growth. A year ago, a nation of 1.25 billion people voted for change and progress in the largest democratic election in human history. We have worked with speed, resolve, and ambition of, to fulfill our pledge. In less than a year, our growth has rebounded to 7.5%. India has emerged as one of the fastest growing major economies in the world. And we have the potential to grow even faster at a time when the global economy remains weak, the world speaks in one voice that India is the bright spot of hope to become the new locomotive for global economic momentum. We are concerned that our challenges are vast across India's immense social and economic diversity. But we have faith in our sound policies and good governance. We draw confidence from the unity of our nation and the common purpose of our people. Even more, we get our energy from the aspirations of a young India with 800 million youth under the age of 35 years. They are eager to pursue their dreams and confident in their ability to do so. So, as we transform the lives of our people, we also create and fuel our partnership. And a hope that location will not be constrained on Mongolia's right to choose its partners. We can seize the economic opportunities of the digital world and work together to make it more secure against growing cyber threats. We can use India's expertise in dairy to launch a white revolution on these vast steppes. We can work together to add value to Mongolia's Pashmina resources right here. We can create partnership for affordable modern health care in Mongolia. We can use our heritage of traditional medicines to improve holistic treatment in our countries and abroad. As Indians travel abroad more, Mongolia has the opportunity with its natural and spiritual wealth to become a major destination for them. More than just trade and investment, our development partnership is a reflection of our shared ideals and vision. I believe that the greatest form of this partnership is investment in the development of human resources and institutions. This gives a nation its own capacity to solder the responsibility for its progress. It enhances its independence of choice and it makes progress more sustainable we remain deeply committed to this vision. 
today i will lay the foundation stone for the expansion and upgrading of the atal vihari vajpay center for excellence in information and communication technology under india's training program mongolia is one of our largest partners we will increase the i tech training source slots for mongolia from 150 to 200 we will also establish an india mongolia joint school later today i will hand over the bhavatron equipment that can help treat cancer in mongolia this will be the first demonstration of operation in the civil nuclear sector Finally, today conveyed to Prime Minister our decision to provide one billion US dollars line of credit to develop institutions, infrastructure, and human resources in Mongolia. Our security. Thank you. Our security cooperation is growing. We can learn a great deal from each other. no one can doubt the well known skills of mongols we are proud to conduct defense exercise together and i am pleased that we have signed agreements today to cooperate more closely on border security and cyber security we have also agreed that india will help establish a cyber security center in mongolia defense and security establishment but the real strength of our relationship lies in the goodwill between our people and in the faith that unites us across the distances it is a power that can do more than just draw our two countries closer it can help advance peace stability and prosperity in asia and the pacific region there was a time when the messenger of lord buddha linked asia with his message and love and compassion the sitting sands of time have not buried their footprints because the value of their message they were diminishes wherever have travel in asia from the age of pacific to the center of the indian ocean from the sea of shores of southeast asia to the lofty heights of the himalaya from the thick and forests of the tropics to the span of this steppes i see thriving monuments and temples dedicated to lord buddha the eight fold path of lord buddha prescribes not just the path to happiness of individuals but also a guide to the well being of society and nations it is a message of kindness love and compassion for all it is a lesson of deepest respect for human beings and human rights for faith in peace and non violence this is a path that tells us to reach out to the weakest and the poorest in our societies it is a vision that sees the interdependence of all things in the universe and the virtue of simplicity therefore it is a path to a more sustainable planet it holds lessons for the world that is threatened by the excesses of consumption and disharmony between man and nature as in the prosperous west asia of rising incomes and aspirations must remember and follow this message above all it is a guide for a relationship of peace equality respect and cooperation between nations small and large weak and powerful it is a call for each of us 
at individual and at nations to assume the universal responsibility to mankind and our planet. It inspires us to think of common good and all nations. The teachings of Lord Buddha are reflected in the principles of democracy. The path of righteousness is based on freedom of mind, liberty of thought, liberty of action, and liberty of speech. These are the foundations of democracy. It is defined by recognition of interdependence, acceptance of diversity, and belief in coexistence. Its essence is the freedom of human beings, faith in dialogue, rule of law, and resolution of differences through peace, peaceful means. So if we follow the right path of the Master, it will also be natural to walk on the path of democratic values. Here in Mongolia, we see the union of these two ideas <coughs> and two ideals. I say this to Asia, whatever forms of government each nation choose, however, we define ourselves as a state, we can still apply the principles of democracy in our engagement with each other. Whatever path we have chosen, whatever be the history of our disputes or the nature of our claims, we are linked by the common spiritual heritage across a vast arc of Asia. The convergence of Buddhism and democracy provides us a path to build an Asia of peace and cooperation, harmony and equality. This is the region that it has woken up to its destiny. No region in the world has seen so much progress in the last half century as Asia. No aid has seen transformation on such scale in one generation as our continent. This is the region of ancient wisdom and youthful dynamism. It is a continent that is expected to lead the world in the 21st century. <coughs> Yet, this is also a region that lies on the uneasy age of uncertainty, of unsettled questions, of unresolved disputes and unforgotten memories. Across Asia's diversity, we also see growing disparity of hope and opportunities. Asia has given much to the world through the ages. It now has the responsibility to shape its future. So now, more than our own requirements. I'm sure we will be able to do the requirement which the Asia wants from us and the world thinks about us. And I'm sure with this, our spiritual background and with this, our extraordinary quality of the mankind, we can serve to the world and to the society. And I'm sure that the path of righteousness is based on freedom of mind, liberty and thought. I'm sure that whatever we have decided and then in the widening course of history, our own cultures, literature, and art become interconnected and it continues to shine in the richness of India's diversity and culture. Today, Indians and Mongolians are telling the world that the bond of hearts and minds have the strength to overcome the barriers of distances. And I'm sure that this will improve the whole, all of our uh, spirits, 
and we will continue to give and this is a token of our abhorrence of our shared spiritual heritage and respect for our friendship. As the sapling grows, it will be an emblem of our growing partnership. In time, it should also become a symbol of humanism in the world and conservation of our planet. I thank you once again. Thank you. Sarve Bhavantu Sukhena, Sarve Santu Niramaya, Sarve Bhadrani Paschantu, Ma Kaschidu Bhagavad, may happiness be bestowed on all. And when I entered the parliament, when I saw the symbol, I found a special connectivity with this parliament. There is a symbol, lotus is there. And we are happy to know that my party's symbol is also a lotus. So it is a very special connectivity with you. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी संबोधित कर रहे थे सबसे पहले उन्होंने अपने शानदार स्वागत के लिए शुक्रिया अदा किया और उसके बाद मंगोलिया और भारत के रिश्तों के बारे में उन्होंने कहा उन्होंने कहा कि 60 साल पुराना हमारा रिश्ता है भारत और मंगोलिया का रिश्ता कूटनीतिक रिश्ता 60 साल पुराना रहा है और आइए एक बार फिर से सुनते हैं कि प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी ने क्या कुछ कहा मंगोलिया की संसद में इट इज ट्रूली ग्रेट ऑनर टू स्पीक टू द ग्रेट हराल It is a special privilege to do so in the 25th year of democracy in Mongolia. You are the new bright light of democracy in our world. I am deeply grateful for your generosity in hosting me on a Sunday. I am humbled by the warmth. of the welcome and your wonderful hospitality everything that i see and experience here speaks clearly of unlimited goodwill for india around 2000 years ago monks from india crossed difficult terrain and long distance to spread the message of lord buddha in this enchanting land many went from here to the hot tropics of india in search of spiritual knowledge centuries ago whenever horizons and our mobility were limited the great mongols united asia and europe the stories of courage daring and adventure continues to captivate human imagination around the world their impact on human history has been profound in the widening course of history our own cultures literature and art became interconnected and it continues to shine in the richness of india's diversity and culture to mongolia ki sansad ko sambodhit karte hue pradhanmantri shukriya ada kiya aur ye pehli baar aisa ho raha hai aitihasik hai unhone kaha ki sunday ko sambodhit karne kyunki sunday hai chutti hoti hai aur aise mein pehli baar 
कोई विदेशी नेता को संबोधित करने का मौका मिला है मंगोलिया की संसद को यह भी अपने आप में ऐतिहासिक है मंगोलिया संसद में कमल देखकर खुशी हुई ये जब समापन कर रहे थे अपने भाषण का प्रधानमंत्री ने तब उन्होंने इस बात का जिक्र किया उन्होंने कहा कि मैंने जैसे ही एंटर किया मंगोलिया की संसद में जैसे ही अंदर दाखिल हुआ सबसे पहले मुझे जो सिंबल दिखा जो वहां प्रतीक दिखा वो कमल था और वो देख काफी खुशी हुई क्योंकि जिस पार्टी से मैं आता हूँ जिस पार्टी से मैं बिलोंग करता हूँ उसका चिन्ह भी कमल है तो ये बात प्रधानमंत्री ने कही अपने भाषण के आखिर में साथ ही साथ मंगोलिया और भारत के रिश्तों पर उन्होंने काफी कुछ कहा बौद्ध धर्म हमें दया का सबक सिखाता है साथ ही उन्होंने ये भी कहा कि दोनों ही देशों के बीच में साठ साल पुराना कूटनीतिक रिश्ता रहा है जो कि काफी अहम है